Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to talk about my hi-fi rack. Admittedly that's something that I initially didn't plan on ever talking about or making video about it. I made it a year ago, a year and a half ago, but so many of you kept asking in the comments like what is that hi-fi rack behind you? Where did you buy it? How much did it cost? And also, visitors that came personally here in my home to listen to my system, it catches the attention definitely and people ask about it. So I thought I should have a quick chat, like short video about it and tell you how I actually made this one because I did it myself, well, not exactly, but it was partially made by my design and partially assembled by me and my friend because we made two of these. And I'll put the dimensions of my rack on the screen. Uh, it was made to fit my last place. That was the previous apartment that I was living in. And that was the maximum length that I could afford to fit in that space. Nowadays, I would probably go with even a little bit wider rack, but still there is no need for it. So if you're wondering how did we chose the proper design and proper materials for this rack, well, basically we just browsed the web and collected images and ideas from the brand hi-fi racks that we liked. And one that I personally really liked was Podium XL. I think it's produced in Britain. And as you can see, that rack, Podium XL and my own, they have really similar construction. Three different levels and then each of the levels have five legs. Two in front, then three in the back. Because that way you do have a slicker look to the rack. Because looking from the front, there's only left and right leg, nothing in between to separate and force you to put your pieces of gear left or right. But in the back, there is that additional middle leg that actually helps when it comes to just sturdiness and how much weight you can put on each level, because it helps right in the middle where maybe without it, such long rack would flex a little bit or bend over time. So really, we didn't invent a wheel, we just observed what other reputable manufacturers of hi-fi racks are doing. And if you're wondering, like, why didn't you just purchase the finished rack, hi-fi rack from a reputable brand, if you like one of those? And it's because of the price, mainly. That Podium XL costs £1,000 when it's made out of solid oak. So it's not some sort of MDF or plywood or chipboard veneered, but it's a full solid wood plank. Made out of oak, it costs £1,000. And if you're not familiar with the value of the pound, that would be like 1200 US dollars or euros. So my friend and me, we decided like, this is not that complicated, let's build one. And after browsing a little bit and planning this whole thing, finally, we found a really good wood shop that offered us really affordable oak, 40 millimeters thick. But then we realized that they really offer dirt cheap walnut planks. And that was a surprise for us because walnut is usually more expensive than oak. And this one particularly is European walnut coming from the neighboring country, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Its natural look is just gorgeous in my opinion and my friend's opinion. But we wondered, is walnut actually as good as oak for the furniture? And quick googling showed us, yes, yes it is. A lot of high-end rack manufacturers in the US, for example, are using walnut, solid walnut, like we planned. And the, the inspiration for this rack, Podium XL, actually has a premium version of it made of walnut that's 2,000 pounds. Yeah, that's quite a lot of money in my opinion. 
So we asked uh, that wood shop and they gave us a great price. These three levels, so as I said, 40 millimeters thick solid walnut wood would cost us around 200 euros, 200 US dollars. Maybe it was a little bit higher initially, but we haggled a little bit and final cost was 200. And the same wood shop was also offering to send it for us free of charge. And if we want for some small fee to even apply a finish, oil based or lacquer or anything that we want, they could tint it. So I was all for it. I said like, this is great. We could have like basically finished levels just from the same shop. But unlike me, my friend is a little bit more picky. So he was insistent on that, that we should use a Rubio Monocoat oil. It's a natural oil and it's supposedly really easily fixable, repairable. Once you actually scratch it, you can do it yourself. You don't have to send everything, you can just fix a spot that's problematic. You can do all of that by hand, but it would go slower. He had proper tools, so that went faster. And I think that just sanding and cleaning and oiling these took us around two days of work. And of course, we were drilling these five holes in each level so we can actually screw in the legs. And talking about the legs, those are actually made of solid aluminium. And Podium XL, for example, uses square shaped wood planks or stabs, I don't know how it's called, but we noticed that some really high reputable brands, they use solid aluminum legs. And we actually liked the idea because aluminum painted black goes really well with wood and with this walnut finish, in our opinion. So we did that. We just bought aluminum and then we found a workshop that would cut that those aluminum pieces that we need to proper lengths and drill holes and make threads inside for screwing each of the levels. And finally, we went and have those aluminium legs painted in black. Well, actually, it's not truly a paint, but it's a really thin mate plastic coating of a high quality that looks great. It really looks like powder coated aluminum, like some sort of anodized aluminum. You cannot see it's a plastic coating. And you can see the results. In my opinion, this together looks pretty great. And finally, that was also something that we have seen other manufacturers using it we decided to decouple each level from the floor and from each other by using spikes, the same one that you would use on your speakers. And we actually never tested how would rack behave without spikes if everything was connected by screws or glued together. Once again, we were just following a good practice set by proven and reputable hi-fi rack brands. If they're doing it, it's probably good and it will be good for our do-it-yourself project. Finally, I think that the cost of each of these ended up somewhere around 350 euros or US dollars in material plus our work, of course. We definitely spent few working days just acquiring materials, carrying it to the workshop to have some work done and eventually at my friend's house and sending, oiling, drilling and assembling it took few working days. But the end result is here and in my opinion, it's really good. Now, in this video, I will not go into details about how a hi-fi rack influences the sound of your system, but it does. Just a different geometry, if it's opened or maybe closed, 
influences the acoustic space that your speakers are seeing. It's definitely not the same if it's open like this one, or if you have doors that will close off that part of the room and maybe vibrate a little bit. It's just not a field that I feel comfortable giving any advice. We didn't uh, really test our rack against any reputable hi-fi rack. We just followed the same steps, same kind of design, and uh, our line of thoughts was if it's working in their case, if those racks are getting really good reviews and really good impressions from the users, why wouldn't our rack made of the completely same material, solid wood, of the completely same thickness, and using the uh, same sort of design and piling up with spikes, why wouldn't it perform well too? I'll just shortly mention what happened for the first time when I actually mounted this rack into my system. Before it, I was using like a cheap chipboard a shelf from Ikea or something like that. It was not Ikea, but something similar. And it had doors. It was really hollow when you knock on it. Unlike this one that, that's full because of thick, solid wood. And I have been building my own hi-fi system around it for years. And I was used to how everything sounded with that rack that's out of like regular store, nothing hi-fi about it. And for the first moment I put everything on this one and I was thinking like, will I hear any difference? A lot of people on the web say hi-fi rack is really important to the sound of your system. And sure enough, I immediately heard a different sound. But funnily enough, it was not for the best, at least at that moment because using rack of this type that's completely opened and firmer with less vibrations obviously made my bass line and mid bass sound firmer and drier and leaner. And that might be a good thing because you don't want your hi-fi rack actually vibrating and adding to the notes that might suit you tonally, but it's not the information that's coming from the recording. It's just adding bloat. But at that time, as I said, my whole system was balanced around that older hi-fi rack, and I liked that tonality. And then moving to this hi-fi rack just tilted that balance. It was more high frequency oriented, more detailed oriented less bass and mid bass and body than I was used to. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> we put so much effort into it and I don't like how this sounds. But eventually I actually came to realize that what I was lacking with this shelf, I could regain by choosing different components or maybe different cables or just moving my speakers in the room a little bit differently. And that would probably be my first advice. If you ever change your hi-fi rack and you're uh, not satisfied with the outcome, with the tonality that it brought to your system, just move your speakers a little bit. Different rack brings different geometry around and in between your speakers. And the position that you've decided on as the best one with some previous maybe closed track that just changed the geometry of the room differently is probably not optimal anymore. So I played with speakers a little bit, I played with different components, that's what I do, that's why this channel is still existing. And I regained the tonality that I really liked and I do believe that in the end, final result is that this rack actually influences the sound. It adds less color than the previous one. Because I think that bass and mid bass oomph with the previous one was artificially introduced and it, it actually did not contain 
information from the recording that you're getting when your gear is actually capable of a really good and juicy and powerful bass. But not to get too much into the sonics of, of a hi-fi rack, and some of you will probably be like, you're crazy man, that's all snake oil, That it's, it's not possible, it's just a rack. Maybe it's just wine talking or whiskey talking or I'm delusional. But today I just wanted to share our experience with building a hi-fi rack. It was actually pretty fun. It did take some effort, few days of actually trying to find the materials and then workshops that will do the work that you need to be done and you cannot do it yourself. And in the end, we are really happy with the final result. We are happy with how it looks, how it behaves, and especially we are happy about the end total cost that's just many times lower than if we would just enter any hi-fi store and buy any hi-fi rack. For this amount of money, you basically cannot buy a hi-fi rack, at least in my country. Maybe if you double it, you can buy something decent, but it still probably wouldn't be made as good as we made this one. Yeah, that would be all for today, guys. Uh, many questions during this last year for the Hi-Fi Rack. And I hope this video answers at least most of them. So yeah, if you want, if you're willing to put some effort and some time, you can also make your own. It's not any sort of advanced technological thing. Anybody with some effort and that knows how to use tools can make one and maybe enjoy the process and save some money too. And that would be all for today. Now like, comment, subscribe, visit my Patreon page and consider supporting what I do here on this channel. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.